complex. Com you think the Keystone Pipeline is complex? It takes a very dirty product, ships it through the United States, where we bear the risk of an oil spill. Could bring about thousands of family paying wage jobs. Yes, there will be temporary construction jobs, but we can do better, particularly as this committee if we made the investments we need to make in our water infrastructure, our port infrastructure, our roads, bridges, highways, and transit systems, we could put millions of people to work permanently. It's good for our national security. It will significantly increase carbon pollution, and the oil will be exported to other countries. It's been under study for five years. We build pipelines everywhere in America every day. Welcome back to The Ed Show, folks. Tonight, we continue our conversation here on The Ed Show over the Keystone Pipeline. And as you just saw, it is a very controversial topic, and it's got some very different uh, political bedfellows in all of this. Now, I know a lot of my viewers are surprised at my position on this, so I wanted to take a moment tonight to directly address some of your questions and concerns, and we'll do this again on The Ed Show as well. In Twitter, viewer Deborah wrote... It's about climate change. We need to stop all oil and gas extraction. Well, my response to that is that the hard, cold truth is that the United States is an oil and gas dependent country, and we're going to be for the foreseeable future. And I think it really is a disservice to the conversation and a debate to take an all or nothing approach to this. And we're not really confronting uh, reality here. The State Department report did find that oil derived from the tar sands generates about 17 percent more greenhouse gas emissions than traditional crude. But you need to weigh the alternative, folks, as I see it. According to the same report, continuing to transport the oil by rail would release 28 percent more greenhouse gases than a pipeline. Another viewer wanted to know, Ed, if the pipeline is built, will it increase the rate of extraction? Well, the State Department study says the project is unlikely to significantly impact the rate of extraction or the continued demand of heavy crude oil at refineries. And I think this is key here. If this is built, it doesn't mean that you and I are going to be consuming more. We, the consumers, have to do something here. Here we can do something about safety with the pipeline. I have my own environmental argument for the pipeline as well, and you just heard a bit of it there. According to the same State Department study, if we keep using rails, we're looking at nearly 300 spills per year with over 1,200 barrels of oil released. If the pipeline is built, it would likely spill an average of just 500 barrels with a leak occurring every two years. So do the numbers. Other viewers questioned uh, the idea this would make us more energy independent. So let's be clear here. This would be, I think, a step in the right direction when it comes to energy independence. The pipeline would reduce U.S. reliance on oil imports from countries less friendly than Canada. Now, traditionally, we have gotten our heavy crude from countries like Mexico, Venezuela, and Saudi Arabia. Canadian officials have made it clear at a press conference they are claiming that the oil from Venezuela and Nigeria is dirtier than the tar sands oil. And so who knows? I mean, who knows who's telling the truth? And we're already refining that oil from those other countries here in the United States. I believe that we should get our oil, if we're going to do this, from our friendly neighbor to the north. Obviously, the best solution is it'll never come out of the ground. But that's not reality. It is going to come out of the ground. There's activists on both sides. And whereas the liberals are saying that we can't do this because we have to be concerned about the climate, what the liberals have to do is elect officials who make decisions to make sure that this doesn't happen. But where we are right now for the safety when it comes to rail and highways, you just heard Peter DeFazio talk about infrastructure. We're not building the roads. We're not doing the bridges. We're not adding to the infrastructure. We're not adding to the jobs. And I don't go along with this pipeline is because it's going to be a big job creator. I go along with it because we're putting too much pressure on rail and we're putting too much pressure on our highways and trucking industry to move all of this oil, which we are pumping now that we never pumped five and ten years ago from the Bakken shale. There's going to be spills everywhere, but they won't be as big and it will reduce the risk if we have this pipeline. That's how I see it. Joining me now is our rapid response panel, Joe Rome, founder of climateprogress.org, and also Josh Fox, the director and producer of Gasland. 
and Gasland too. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. I want to hear what you have to say about this. Joe, you first. Lay out your argument against the pipeline. I know our audience wants to hear it. Good to have you with us tonight. Uh, well, as a scientist, it's pretty simple. We're going to have to leave most of the carbon, uh, the dirty pools of carbon, unused in the ground if we're going to avoid catastrophic global warming. And as a progressive and as a father, I just think it's immoral for us to say, hey, we're going to just keep doing what we're doing and destroy a livable climate for our children and grandchildren. And, and the thing about a pipeline, Ed, unlike rail, is once you build a pipeline, you are stuck with it. I mean, you are making a long-term commitment. I mean, it's like you're a drug user and you're hooking up an IV line and the drugs are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. I think at some point, we have to say we're going to end this addiction. And maybe we're not going to end this addiction tomorrow, but we're certainly going to end it bef long before this pipeline is going to reach the end of its life. Okay. Josh, your take on why we should not build the Keystone Pipeline. Well, I, I agree with Joe that this is a moral issue. This is about President Barack Obama's moral leadership on climate. We heard in the inaugural address that climate was a priority, and stopping the Keystone XL pipeline is an extraordinarily important thing for this president to do. But, but what you're doing, and I don't know if you understand this, you're quoting a State Department report which is corrupt and was created by a company, a contractor for the State Department, that actually has vast financial ties to the oil and gas industry itself. So the, the, the veracity of this report is very much in suspicion. And right now, it is as a way of, of uh, encapsulating exactly what's wrong with the government process on this. We have oil and gas infiltrating every single regulatory process at every level of state, local, and federal government. You're right. This oil is dirty. It will come from the tar sands. If you had seen what's going on with the tar sands, where they scrape the entire surface off of the earth, of the boreal forest, contaminating lakes, contaminating rivers, contaminating streams of the indigenous people that are in, the, in, in Alberta. And if you understand that mm -hmm. James Hansen said this was game over for the planet if we uh, unleash the amount of carbon from the tar sands, you understand the moral part of this. But when you look at the government okay. part of this, it means that you're endorsing on your show a report that is actually from the oil and gas industry, people who are in business with the oil and gas industry, and not some impartial State Department thing, as you claim. Well, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't bring you on this program tonight to question your, you know, your resource on the, on the story, but if you want to call the State Department their report fraudulent, I'm sure the president will take that under well, it, consideration. It has, it has uh, been called I, into question. I, 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 I do right know, I do know what I'm doing tracking. on this show. I, I do know what I'm doing on this show, and I also know that this is a consumption issue. And I also know that moving oil through a pipeline is not an addiction. It's a safety measure. That is, is the, the push here. Uh, I can show you an absolute. I can show you trains running into each other that are carrying oh. oil. Why aren't environmentalists saying that we shouldn't be doing rail the way we do? We this are. is a reality. This, this, is, is, but that's this an isn't a report. That, go ahead. This is a false dichotomy. Obviously, environmentalists are opposing the tar No, it's not, because the train derailed and the train had an accident. They're opposing extreme and No, no, that's not true, actually, Ed. That's not true. The climate movement okay, has rallied around this issue. Okay, we're making up the videotape, then? 1,000 people, and I am one of them, was arrested in front of this White House two years ago to protest climate change. We had 40,000 people in Washington at the biggest climate rally uh, in history here, pre predominantly because Bill McKibben rallied people on Keystone XL about the tar sands to make okay. this a about well, there's millions of people that pipeline. wanted universal health care. There's, there's millions of people that wanted universal health care and didn't get it, and I have to be, happen to be one of and, them, too, and there were rallies there, too. Here's the bottom and, line here, gentlemen. We are not going to get off oil tomorrow, next week, next year, in 10 years. That's our mission to do it. But as we are pumping more and more oil out of the ground in North Dakota, Montana, and South Dakota, our, di our whole dynamic has changed about energy independence. Oil is part of it. There will be Bakken shale oil in this pipeline. And That's an absolute. Going? Isn't it going and to It's going to go and it's, it is going to be refined in the United States and it's going to be put on the world market. But that also gives us That's a position. That's not energy independence. We're not That's exploitation okay. for sale. Go, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. I just uh, no, Ed, I want to. Look, I. I you know, you've say, attacked me and, and my source, which is fine, and I thought we could have a conversation here. I know everybody's passionate about that. Are you denying the statistics finding higher greenhouse gas emissions 
when it's tra transported by rail or roadway? Fair question. Well, Ed, uh, I think that's a pretty simple question. You obviously don't use ver uh, produce ma very many greenhouse gases running through a pipeline. So, yes, it is slightly higher if you run it by rail. Okay. But I, I think, okay. I, I, and I appreciate being invited on the show when you know that, you know, that I think that this whole project I I is immoral. Uh, I think you're, you are offering up a false choice, though. It is true we're going to keep using oil. And as you say, we have oil in the Bakken. The question is, are we going to make it really easy to exploit one of the dirtiest pools of carbon on the planet when we know that the world is going to wake up in the next 10 to 20 years? And yeah, we're not going to go off oil tomorrow, but we're going to start going off the dirtiest pools of carbon, and we're going to have okay. to leave them in the ground. And, and I think... This but is Joe, among what, the dirtiest Joe, what pools. About the oil? Joe, what about the oil that's coming in from Nigeria and also uh, Venezuela? I am told by Canadian officials that that's just as dirty or dirtier than the tar sands oil. So we're already refining that. What about that? Well, the president can't stop that by simply saying no. He can stop this. And, I, you know, this is, I, I guess at the bottom line, one either believes that the exploitation of the tar sands is immoral, that it can't con it continue to grow at the pace it's growing decade after decade. If you believe that, then the president simply has to say no on the grounds of morality. I don't think that the United States has to import all okay. that oil by uh, train. I think we're going to stop it. Uh, we're going to wise up, Ed, uh, over the next 10 to 20 years. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to start by not, you know, burning this oil. We're going to burn some oil. We need to burn less and less. In fact, okay. actually, I agree with already that. gearing up I, for, all, the, I, for the rail fight in, in New York State. Say that again, sir? In fact, activists are already gearing up for the railway fight in New York State because some of this tar sands oil would be going by rail through New York State. So it, to, to say okay. that this is about a pipeline, it is about the source of the carbon. It is about transitioning our society, and it's about Barack Obama's moral leadership on an issue that he pledged changed, and we voted for him based on that pledge of change. And it's also about a State Department report that you say is fraudulent. So I guess we got a lot of work to do. Joe Rome and Josh Fox, good to have both of you with us tonight. We'll have you back. I'm not done with this discussion. There's a lot.